You know, injection sprayers are money-making game changers for our industry. They save you a ton of time, and we all know that time is money. They're very easy to use, they're very convenient, and they do a great job. However, they must be working right. And I've found throughout the 35 years or so I've been doing this that most cleaners have no idea how to use one, how to maintain one, and to make sure that it's working correctly by testing it. So I feel like this video, like the injection sprayer, is going to be a game changer for you. I'm going to walk you through how to use it, how to maintain it, and how to test it. So let's go now into the back school and we'll get started. You know, before we head into the back, I basically wanted to explain to you exactly what an injection system is. The proper terminology is a Venturi siphoning system, and it can work off a high pressure or low pressure. So you're moving the liquid through, through pressure, and it goes in here and the Venturi action draws up your product, whether you're using a pre-spray, a deodorizer, or a protector, and it delivers it evenly and consistently every single time to the carpet when it's functioning properly, which I'm going to help you with in the back to make sure it is working properly. And this is so much more superior than a pump-up unit because a pump-up unit will give you uh, larger drops, smaller drops, depending on how much in there, how much pressure you have in there, and it's very inconsistent, so you get inconsistent results. And we know as professionals, we need very consistent results and the customers deserve that. Also, uh, rem remember this, there is a metering tip in here, and this metering tip is set at eight to one. Now, if you take that metering tip out, which is what I do, and I'll show you more in the back, it delivers it four to one every single time. All right, now, remember this also, that you can go ahead and raise your pressure up to 500 PSI or more, and that will dilute the product more. Now, if you've got a carpet that's really hammered, lower it down to 300 PSI, and you're going to deliver more product to the carpet. Okay, with that in mind, watch this couple of second video with Brian, and I'm going to head on back here and give you more information. And grout master. Yeah, so I'm gonna say um this tile and grout. Grout master. Okay, uh then we can uh so I'm gonna say add the free spray. Grout master. Oh, okay. Well same thing. So let me try some free sample. Grout master. Oh, okay. Well thank you very much. Oh well you pretty very helpful. Goodbye. And grout master. Grout master, the industry's best tile and grout and carpet cleaning booster. Okay, let's talk about the proper use of an injection sprayer. Number one, you want to determine the product you're going to be using inside the home. Remember, every home and every client is, is unique. There's different soil levels, there's different expectation levels, and you want to make sure that you're using the products that fit each home. So first thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and take out my metering tip. That way the unit will be four to one instead of eight to one. That way I know this will generally do one home, no problem. That way I can refill it and go into the new, next home and do the same thing. Now how do I determine what the right product is? Well, what if a client wants 100% green? What if you want to use a powder that's 99% green? What if you need something extreme? Also remember there's five different soil types in America. So you might need to try our sample pack and find out what works best in your area. There's different uh, hardnesses of water and there's different types of soil all throughout America. So you want to make sure you get the right product for your area that fits your cleaning needs. And what's cool is every single home being different, you might need to boost it, you might need to adjust the ratio. You can easily do that on the fly from home to home when you're running it four to one. Now, let's talk about how to mix it properly. When using powder, sometimes it takes a little bit longer for it to dilute. And a lot of people think, well, the hotter it is, the better it is. That's not true. If you exceed 180 degrees when using an injection sprayer, it will, cavit it will cause cavitation and it won't draw and you're not going to get any pre-spray down on the, on the carpets and you're not going to do a good job, or you might just get a small amount on it, and you can't really tell what's going on, and you get an ineffective cleaning job. You don't want that to happen. So what I like to do is I'll take a, like a protein mixing ball for a drink. Uh, I prefer a side fill port. I'll go ahead and drop it inside there. I'll fill this halfway with hot water, generally tap water, and I'll have my product in there. I'll shake it up real good. Then I'll fill it up the rest of the way, shake it up real good, and now I know I've got a really great dilution going on. I'm going to go ahead and set my truck mount at about 1500 RPMs, that way the heat's not too high. I'm going to go ahead and set my PSI at 400 PSI because that's what this is calibrated to work at, 400 PSI is the ideal. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go inside the home and I'm going to start spraying. Now I like to spray about 12 inches from the ground. I don't want the lance too high and I don't want it too low. 
And I don't want to just sit in one section and really overdo it. So I like to lay it down in layers because a fiber, what, what can happen to you is the products can run down the fiber real fast. You can force it down. It can miss some of the different soil types that are sitting on there and it won't cause proper emulsion or suspension. So I'll lay it down in layers so it kind of sits on the top and it does its job and breaks it down and it flushes and easily comes off of the carpet. That's very important. And then lastly, I like to use, generally I'll spray the whole upstairs first. I'll go ahead and clean, I'll come downstairs and spray the downstairs, working from my cleanest area to my dirtiest ever area. But just remember, never allow the pre-spray to dry. If you find it drying, go ahead and mist it down, give it another coat. Also, if you come across an area that's very impacted with oils or urine, you, you can boost it accordingly too, so that's really nice. Okay, so that covers everything for the use. And if you stay tuned at the very end of this video, I'm going to have some extra bonus footage. Now let's move on to how to maintain your injection sprayer. Okay, let's talk about maintenance. And let's illustrate how important maintenance is. First of all, if you've ever gone inside of a home and you pre-sprayed and you forget to kick the hoses out of the way and you go ahead and pre-spray that area and you pre-spray the hose not under it, you'll notice as you're cleaning, you've got this area or this stripe that's not as clean as the rest of it. That shows how important it is to put the proper amount down and also to pre-spray the carpets to get the ideal appearance that you want for your client and for retention and for repeats and reviews, right? All right, so now you want to make sure you maintain the unit and this is how we're going to do it. We're going to break it down in daily, weekly, and monthly. First of all, for daily, you want to make sure that your filter, whether it's this type here or the acorn type, you want to make sure it's nice and clean and nice and clear so it can draw properly. Also, notice this unit here doesn't have a little clamp on it. Uh, I like to go ahead and put a clamp on it because if there's any air leakage in there, it won't draw also, okay? And uh, lastly, at the end of the day, I'll go ahead and pull this out and I'll go ahead and just let it flush. So that way just clear water runs through it and you're not running anything through the machine into chemistry, put it back together. Now for weekly, I'll go ahead and take this apart right here and you're going to notice there's a ball and a spring in there. And this can get clogged. Sometimes there's a filter, a Teflon ring in there. Some come with it and some don't. But most of all, you want to make sure that ball and that spring is nice and clear and it can move properly. So drop it back in there. Be careful not to lose these small components. Put the spring in, put the ball back on top, screw it back together, put your hose on there, and you're good to go. That's your weekly. Now, once a month, and this is probably the biggest area of concern I've seen with cleaners coming into my shop all the time, is they do not realize and don't clean the filter that's inside their handle. There's a cone-shaped filter in here. You go ahead and just screw it apart, of course. And you're going to notice this filter in here, which catches all your sediment and debris. And this affects your PSI, and it won't draw properly, and you're not going to get the proper amount of pre-spray down, and you're not going to get ideal results. If you do all these things right here, you're going to notice that it's going to perform, and it's going to be much more efficient, and you're going to get greater results. Okay, now, however, how do you go ahead about testing it to make sure that it's putting the right amount of product down? Let's move on to testing. Okay, what do I mean by testing? I want to make sure that it's drawing the proper amount of chemistry out to do the job correctly. How do I do that? Instead of getting involved in all the math, the easiest way to do it when using a one to four sprayer is get yourself a 32 ounces, and I like to add a little bit of acid rinse in there, and I'll do this once a week. That'll help flush out the unit, extend the life of it, and also clears the chemistry that's in there, and I can see exactly how it's working. So I'll go ahead and pull this out, I'll hold it by the handle, I'll drop it inside of my acid rinse here, I'll go ahead and take my lance and I'll point it in here, and I'm going to get a little bit over a gallon, because remember it makes five gallons. It's going to clear easily five gallons throughout a home, so I'll get a little bit over a gallon, maybe 1.4 gallons. I know it's working properly. As long as I'm over a gallon, I'm happy. Okay, another thing that can affect your dilution ratio is your tip and the tip size. The ideal size is 8006. And this gives you the perfect fan right there so that way the droplets aren't too large and they're not too small where you're having to breathe the vapor and it's not vaporizing on you. Also, remember to replace the tip at least every year because it's going to change with pressure and with use. Also, remember this too if your block does stop working or it goes bad, we have these in the TMF store, and it's a lot easier just to replace the block than replacing the whole unit, because the whole unit lasts practically forever. It's generally just the block that goes bad, so keep that in mind. Now I'm going to go ahead, we're going to go back to the pr production studio, and I'm going to show you some video footage and break down each little thing, and so that way you can learn and get a few more tips and tricks. 
Okay, to conclude, I'm going to just show you a couple of little points and some exploded views. Now, you notice where we took the filter out and the handle? Look how much debris and sediment is in there. There's no way this machine could breathe and the injector sprayer be able to deliver your product. Okay, let's move on to the next point. Um, we're going to go ahead and show you now a, a demonstration of me actually pre-spraying. Now, if you notice, I'm about 12 to 16 inches from the surface. And I'm using a fan and I'm cutting it off at the end of each stroke. I'm doing the middle. Then I went up high to show you that's the improper way because then you're breathing the product. Too close, you're oversaturating the carpet. So keep yourself about 12 to 16 inches across. And notice I'm not staying in one place for a long time. Okay, I'm just working my way back and forth. And then I'll go ahead and change directions here just to get the outside for demonstration purposes. I'm still cutting it off at the ends. And when I go to, if I want some more extra pre-spray, I'm going to go ahead and remember I said earlier, put it on in layers. So now notice I'm putting a whole other layer on there. This gives me a whole lot better results when I go to clean. Just layers. Don't oversaturate it, but keep it wet. You don't want your pre-spray to dry. Okay, now here's a little breakdown of the whole block unit. Here you can see the metering tip, which I took out. You got the filter down here, your hose. Make sure you put a clamp on the hose if it doesn't have one, or make sure it's not leaking any air, because that'll stop it from pulling also. You can also see the ball, the spring, and the DEMA block. And remember, we sell those blocks. You can just replace the blocks if necessary. Here's the whole unit right here. Remember, I like the side port. Some of them come with an adjustable. I believe it's called the Revolution. You can get that, and it's adjustable. That's kind of cool with a handle on it. Usually it's about five quarts, and you like it operating at four to one. And the last picture here, here's the whole setup of the whole DEMA block with the hose, and that's how it comes from us. Now remember I said that the injector sprayer is a game changer, and now you know if it's operating properly, it does a great job, saves you time, and makes you a ton of money. Also, remember that TMF is a game changer also. If you don't mind, please subscribe me to our YouTube channel. That way, every time a new video comes out, you'll get an alert for it. And we built this production studio for you to benefit, so it raises the quality and the bar of the whole industry. Don't forget, we have the largest forum, truckmountforums.com. We also have a Facebook group where you get instant inf uh, information and answers to all your questions. And I'm generally there a lot, so I can help you with just about anything. Also, TMF Academy, tmfshop.net, where you get all these fine products. I really appreciate all your support. Remember, we're just a father and son team who built this from nothing, and we've done it all for the betterment of the industry. Well, I'm Rob Allen with Truck Malforms. Have yourself a great day. Hey, are you tired of the old, outdated chemistry? Well, so were we, and that's why we got into making our own products. We built a great reputation off of Groutmaster, BioPro, Spiked, and Rob's Secret Formula. It addresses all your different pre-spray needs, and we're constantly tweaking it to make it better and better, and we can do it on the fly. Speaking of getting better, we have three brand new pre-sprays coming out. Watch for it very soon. You're going to love them.